there is this kind of this double-edged sword where some sort of regulation discussion by top entities kind of validates um, uh, the current validates the asset class. But on the other hand, you know, that also raises the risk of uh, regulation, which could stymie the industry. How, where do you feel? Do you think regulators have got it right right now? Well, you know, I'll start by saying that first, you know, Bitcoin doesn't need banks uh, and it has been designed specifically not to be, need banks. And so that's the first <laughs> thing I would say. Second thing I would say, you know, it's great that regulators are paying attention because it, it's, it, it shows that, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are becoming, you know, more and more popular uh, around their constituents and around people. Like, you know, people are buying Bitcoin, people are buying cryptocurrencies and a lot of people are, are, are joining uh, the, the, the crypto community these days. And finally, I would say, you know, all of these discussions are somewhat irrelevant because I think, you know, this is a tsunami of tokenization that is happening. And, you know, Bitcoin is, is one thing, but, you know, think about NFT, think about right. everything that is becoming a token right now. And that's hundreds of trillions of value. These are the new rails of exchanging value. This is the Web3 that is happening. And, right. you know, you can't stop that. Yeah, to go back to your first point, Pascal, is it it's sort of deeply ironic always to me that there's become this centralization of something decentralized mm. to allow people to basically trade with it, to invest in it, to uh, speculate, and whether it be, of course, the exchanges that have been set up around crypto or indeed now the banks wanting to partake, there has been this sort of centralization. What, if it's not just about Bitcoin, there, therefore, which is hard to transact on it, sort of expensive to a certain degree, where is the new exciting areas? Where are the new rails that you're seeing really make a difference if you are wanting to use it as a currency? Yeah, so, you know, us at Ledger, we believe in, in freedom and ownership. Uh, and so we actually, you know, believe in the model where users and, and companies are in charge of their of their own coins and, you know, can, can safeguard them and, you know, we make it safe and easy to use. That's 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 what we stand for. So I think you know in this discussion we think you know everything that is a bank trying to hold Bitcoin. I mean it's it's a good conversation and it should happen because for some users that's going to be their preferred choice. But we feel that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies have been designed so they can be held by users. And so you know the question that you ask with Bitcoin, you know, would you ask the same question with an NFT? If suddenly that token is a representation of a piece of art that you own. You know, you probably want to keep it with you at home, you know, like you do with a, with a painting that you own today. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that, you know, freedom of choice and ownership, that's what's going to drive the market in the future and not so much centralization with banks. Uh, absolutely. There's also, of course, uh, in addition to freedom of ownership, of course, uh, security and stability here. With regards specifically to your business here, uh, Pascal and Ledger, uh, how much interest are you seeing from some of the bigger institutional players right now with regards to seeking out a little bit more uh, of that security and, of course, of that sort of uh, secure ownership? Yeah, I think we, we think it's huge. I mean, you know, we see it from three continents, but I can tell you the three continents are like a little bit different. If we, uh, Europe is a bit more conservative and Europe is uh, is worrying about crypto euro and security tokens, let's say. Yeah. In the US, in the US, it's really about trading Bitcoin and sort of cryptocurrencies. Yeah. And from here, we see, you know, many players entering the game. But I have to say that, you know, the pure players, it reminds me a little bit of the internet when we had, uh, you had like these, uh, these old media companies and, you know, the pure players coming in and you guys, you guys have seen that movie. And so, you know, right. the, the, the new kids in town, they're pretty good. Like, you know, you have like those, those pure players like Coinbase and, and, and the rest that are doing a great job at becoming, you know, big companies fast. And, you know, to a certain extent, that's the, tra that's the trajectory that we want to have at Ledger. I mean, we just raised, yeah, sorry, mate, go. Oh, no, just just real quickly, I wanted to ask you something about the changing nature of crypto. You mentioned NFTs, Web 3.0. When I think of a Ledger wallet, I think of someone putting coins on there, burying it in the safe and never touching it. A lot of these coins, these Web 3.0 apps, require connection from the wallet to the web. Does that change how you think about the Ledger security model? You know, not at all. The Ledger security model has to work, you know, whatever you want to do with your coins. And I think there, there is an evolution with Ledger from just being a safe and you put right. your Bitcoin and you forget about them to being a connected safe. And so what Ledger is really trying to do with your with, with the hardware wallet is exactly what the iPhone did to, to the phone. 
you know, uh, your phone became connected with the iPhone. What we're going to do to your wallet, you have a wallet on you right now, and it's probably leather. Everything that is in your wallet is going to go in form of a token, whether it's your cash, your identity, and so on and so forth. And your future wallet, what Apple did to the phone, Ledger will do it to your wallet.